All right, everyone, we are back. What's going on, Joker? Uh, I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. You sure you want that? If we present you with a medal, you'll end up sitting on stage listening to politicians make speeches for a couple of hours. Fun, fun. That's a good point. They probably make me shave, too. I spent the last seven weeks working on this baby. No medal's worth that. So, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet. If you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a uh, Normandy's yeah. probably too much ship for your average right, did that one. commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Um I have to go. Alright, see you. Yeah, he doesn't have uh, as much to say in as he does in two and three. Oh well. Uh you got anything for me, Preston? Yes, Commander. No. Carry on, Preston. Yes, sir. Alright. Let's talk to the regular crew. So they are going to be in the med bay now. What is this? This is uh, Commander's Quarters, right? I don't think we've actually been in here yet. Personal manual. Pretty nice office, not going to lie. Hey, kid. Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Is this an official evaluation, Commander? Or off the record? Speak your mind, bro. Elenko, when it's just you and me, you can consider it off the record. That's a generous attitude. Okay. I think there's something wrong with all this. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction, but we can't get back up from the council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. So, he kind of goes into it here. Basically, when mankind was first introduced to mass relays and faster than light travel and all that, they used Element Zero for that technology and didn't know what Element Zero would do. And part of the exposure to Element Zero in the womb is developing biotic abilities and becoming a biotic. Uh, it also has other drawbacks that kind of fuck up... Uh, your development so yeah kind of a uh, kind of rough seems like you beat the odds how many didn't make it out of a hundred maybe 60 have no effect 30 suffer adverse effects little things like brain cancer the other 10 show enough ability to augment with implants not always permanent though not like the cancer next thing you know you're out on jump zero how's a kid supposed to deal with that a station at the edge of human space. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the Goose Chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. What kind of time to get physical? Physical, physical. Time then to you talk. Must have had plenty of time to get to know <laughs> each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bull every night after. 
There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful. But not stuck up about it. I think you'd have liked her. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. Mm. Do you know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Canadics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Hmm. Kind of cringe. Go on. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. But that's my own baggage, Commander. No bearing on this. Alenko, there's no regulation that says you can't be friends with your commander. I appreciate that, Commander. I just don't want you to think that I'm a, a whiner. Besides, I've got my past squared away. It sounds like it, Caden. Anything you need, Commander? How about tactical appraisal? What's your opinion on the last mission? Dr. Tassoni. Seems like a sweet girl. Easy on the eyes. I mean, if you like the bookish sort. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. <laughs> Commander? Alright, Caden. Um, thanks for that. Hey, Doc. What's up? Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Hey, Liara. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? Not gonna answer that. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. She's the best. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're gonna ask about Benezia. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Uh, sorry, culture? I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Such as? Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. Of course they are! Our species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. <laughs> That's disgusting! How is that possible? I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term. Not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits on to our daughters. 
It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. We really want to go. Sure, why not? What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. It's kind of an intrusive question, but sure, why not? We're being a little weird anyway. Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Benezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. Hmm. I am what is sometimes called a pure blood, Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face. It is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she wanted to meet you, but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Hmm. Seems like a lot to deal with, friend. You Asari lived for a thousand years. What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend with them. And even after they're gone, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Yeah, now that we've talked about the weird breeding rituals of your species, let's, uh... Go do anything else, honestly. We are as cool, but like, very blunt about shit. And also, like, in Mass Effect 1, especially, she is so worried about how she comes across to people. And kind of, kind of great. Hi, Rex! So, we've got Saren on the run. I mean, I suppose we do. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could tell as soon as I met him. You met him? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. I'll decide what's important. Now tell me how you know Saren. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What was he doing? What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. 
Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. Yikes! Um, what's... <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about the light-hearted, uh, uh, history of your extinction. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Did we already go through these? I feel like we already went through this. Yeah, no, we already did. So long, Rex. Shepard. Yeah, we don't have anything new with the gentrify agent the extinction to talk about. Alright, Williams. Commander, you have a minute to talk. Is this duty related, Chief? No, sir. Well, maybe. I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? They may not serve the Alliance, Chief, but they're allies. At least as far as Saren goes. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. Uh. How do you get from relying on ourselves to mistreating our allies? I don't mean we should mistreat them, Commander. I just think we should be prepared to go it without them. As noble as the Council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. It's very cynical of you. You've got a pessimistic view of the universe, Williams. A pessimist is what an optimist calls a realist. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism. What? Not what the fuck? Yo, I've never seen that line. Should always be more important to them than humans are. Hey, no, you don't sick your fucking dog on it and run. What is wrong with you? It is racism, dude. Or, I guess, species. Xeno. 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 Uh, Xeno. Fuck. Anyway, it'll come to me. Um, I. I've heard this before. You sound like one of those Terra Firma party pamphlets, Chief. Exactly. Terra Firma is a pack of jackals. The founders had ideals. These days they just play off xenophobia and bigotry. No, what are you doing? I hope my reasons are more rational. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth's interests as our own. I am not... You have to work with aliens, my guy. All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. I'm glad there won't be a problem. Anything else you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story about her and her mom not talking. They're family, right? I think she's being straight with us. Or at least, I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Uh -huh. Too bad those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted thousands of years. That's impressive. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. I mean, at least we got her to chill a little bit. But yeah, you do kind of sound like a terror for my pet. Anyway, hi, Garrus. How are you? Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. 
That's tough. But you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a C-Sec man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger, for the same reasons. Huh. You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Turian military recruits. Yeah, a lot of Turians are Spectres. Special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. I see. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules. c sex rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Eh. Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. It's true. I see what you mean, but... I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. It's alright, Garrus, you know. Just because Saren's a dickhead doesn't mean we have to be dickheads. Hey, we leveled up. Um, let's get some more Spectre training. And then maybe we get the start of Intimidate, just in case there's any Intimidate choices I want to take. Hi, Tally. Oh, hello, Shepard. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing. And your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? Too quiet to sleep? The silence wakes you up. Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. Yikes. Trauma. It's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. I think you're just homesick, dude. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until it's gone. That's true. I'm starting to wonder if that's what the pilgrimage is really about. It's given me a whole new perspective on my people and our culture. You know, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of like the Amish and, uh... All that stuff. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Have we talked about your pilgrimage yet? I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our... But no sh... We said this is presented as a gift to the captain of the oh, yeah, no, we did ship do this. we wish to join. Like what? See you later. Alright. Well, crew talk wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. It was still pretty long. Alright. I think I am, just because we just did a fucking hour, I think I am going to end the video here. I'm going to go through equipment and such with the requisition officer. And... Yeah, I think we'll just get ready to uh, clear out the rest of the Artemis Tau. So... Thank you all for watching, or Argos Row, whatever one we're in. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.